In this video we will focus on one of our new hunting rifles, the Sig Sauer Cross. And for you guys who haven't seen our channel before, we produce videos about hunting and hunting equipment. So I suggest you click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. Instead of doing the normal talking head review of the equipment, we have made also some hunting scenes to uh, illustrate how we use the rifle setup and the other equipment. I hope you enjoy. Yeah, that went well. Uh, you can see that the bullets have hit uh, a little bit high, but uh, I think I misjudged the distance a little bit, so I held up a little bit too much. Uh, but it's no problem, it's within the uh, right area anyway, so that's good. Um, and we are lucky here that we don't have to drag him for too far because we can drive down here with the car. Uh, so that's nice. And I think it's a nice size deer to take home for the freezer as well. Uh, to have some meat at home. So uh, now I think we'll go back and uh, go to the car.
Today we have had a totally wonderful morning out here stalking uh, fellow deer and I have been very lucky to shoot this uh, buck. Uh, it's not uh, that often I have possibility to shoot one of these uh, on a wonderful morning stalk in the sun. Uh, there is a lot of you guys who asked me on uh, Instagram and YouTube about my new rifle for this year. So I uh, thought I should take the opportunity to uh, tell you a little bit about the equipment I used for this stalk. And uh, this rifle I have is a Sig uh, Sauer Cross fixed stock. And uh, what it means it has a fixed stock is that uh, on the standard version you can fold the stock here. But in Sweden we don't get any licenses on the rifle with the folded stock. So uh, we need to have it fixed when we get the license. However, it's a little uh, funny. You can probably mount the folding mechanism afterwards and it's still legal. But you don't get the license from scratch with it. It's a little strange. So uh, we will see. However, this is a kind of rifle I have never used. It's a, a kind of a chassis style rifle. And uh, this is very seldom seen in, on the Swedish market. We are not allowed to have rifles that are similar to, by the looks, to military rifles. So uh, this, I have a, quite a lot of uh, struggle to get it through, but uh, after a while I got a hunting license for it. And uh, my impressions after I've hunted with this now for almost one season, uh, shooting uh, maybe eight or ten uh, deer, fellow deer and robux, is that I really like it. Uh, especially I, I like the balance. It puts the most of the weight right between the hands where you want it. And uh, because of the hand guard I can get a very very good grip far out and get very very steady shots standing up without the rest. And there is also a lot of um, adjustment I can make. Uh, I can make adjustments to the length of the stock, to the height of the comb here, and also I can change um, the height of the butt end or what it's called. When it comes to the rifle, uh, this is a caliber uh, 6.5 Creedmoor. And it's also first time for me using uh, that caliber. And uh, so far I've been lucky to have only one shot, one kills with very, very short distances for, for them running after the shot. I uh, used the Horner the ELDX bullet and uh, so far I'm very happy. This guy he went yeah, maybe 10, 15 meters after the shot and just fell down. I can actually see the bullet is right under the skin here. He was a little quartering towards me when I shot. On rifle I have a Stalin silencer. And uh, this I am happy to try out together with Stalin because uh, uh, they don't have normally in their range a version of their silencer that is so short. So it fits between the end of the handguard and the muzzle. Here on the front of the handguard I have a mounting point for my Spartan bipod. And after that I have a mounting point for my uh, gunsling and this is a quick system that uh, comes with the, um, with the rifle and uh, on the stock I have a mounting point here. The magazine is a standard magazine. Uh, this is a Magpul and uh, there is easy to get more magazine or different types of magazine if you want that. The safety of the rifle is a standard thumb sa safety and uh, I think this is very easy to operate. I can operate it from either side of the rifle. The only thing I would like to have is maybe a little red on the red or a white dot to uh, emphasize when the rifle is uh, safe or not safe. That would be very, very good. That is all, all about the rifle. And uh, 
I really like it for a, a stalk when you're moving a lot because it's pretty lightweight, it's easy to carry and uh, so far I'm very happy with the accuracy of the rifle. And when it comes to the other equipment on the rifle, uh, I have a 3 Acupoint AccuPoint rifle scope. This is the 2.5 to 10 times 56 and I like it uh, a lot because it has a very good uh, light transmission and, uh, and also because there is no parallax adjustment on it, uh, it's very easy to get pretty sharp. Of course if I have a parallax I can get it really sharp on every distances but most of the hunting I'm doing is between 20 to 150 maybe 200 meters and uh, when it comes to very fast shots especially when it's a little dusk or dawn uh, it can be a little tricky to find the spot where it's sharp. Uh, this is uh, uh, pretty sharp on uh, about 100 meters and it's totally enough for all other ranges. And for you guys who doesn't know anything about 3D con AccuPoint, I can say that I have hunted with this now for almost 20 years and I am super super happy with it because they are really uh, rough and tough and they can take a lot of beating and they have an illuminated reticle but they have no batteries. And how it works is that uh, you have a fiber uh, thread here and when the light hits it, it, it transmits the light to the reticle so it uh, illuminates and I can adjust the strength of the illumination by closing off the uh, fiber thread like this and uh, this is really good because I don't have to adjust it with the plus or minus or something that I turn a knob or something when you do with normal battery uh, illumination. Here I can illuminate it to the level I really like. If I stalk inside the woods it's perfect but when I come out on this open area here and the sun is harder I want the illumination to be a little stronger but I don't need to adjust it because of course there will come in more light also here so it by itself is uh, illuminated uh, a little stronger. So I just adjust this once and I have it there for every time. And what happens when it's dark? When I stalk in the middle of the night? There is no uh, sunlight coming in here. There is a little uh, tritium capsule uh, inside here that illuminates reticle with a little totally safe radioactive substance. Uh, same kind of things that are in watches and so on. So it really really glows very very uh, very very little. The reticle I use also I need to uh, say a few words about because it's unique to 3 -Dicon. This is a back reticle. It's a, like a triangle uh, and it's in uh, the color amber that so it uh, it's really really easy for the eye to look on and uh, I really like this uh, reticle because when I want to aim ve with very high accuracy I can shoot on the top of this triangle and that there is nothing that covers the target at all because as I see it you can't shoot with more accuracy on, than on the top of, of a point. But when I uh, get close up and it's very fast like driven hunt or uh, when I go up to there when it's uh, very close I can shoot with the whole reticle as a red dot or an amber dot in this case. So uh, I can be very very fast uh, and still accurate. I really like that uh, reticle.
I should guess uh, it's uh, laying inside the forest. The doe, she was running out in the field and standing there, there now. So we wait a little while and then we have to go and see for some blood. Well, we have now waited 20 minutes approximately after I shot, so we will go up and see if we can find some blood. Here, we have some good sign here. This is clearly lung blood. That's pretty much all over the place, so... Um, this is clearly lung blood. It's very bright. So uh, now we will just find out in what direction. But I think it should be here. Yes. very clear trail of blood and I really feel that this is it's went down so just a, hopefully just a matter of tracking it if I uh, have been other blood than lung blood who have been much more careful and maybe gotten getting a dog to track it but this feels very good yeah here it is I had no bullet in the barrel, but I normally close the bolt so I don't get dirt in there. Yeah, this is a fairly young buck. If uh, we was growing trophies here, it would definitely be one to spare. But I need a, a buck for the freezer. And uh, we also need to hunt and shoot something. We haven't seen anything for a while here. So, um, not in the meaning context that we don't have any raw deer because there's a lot of them, but. And the shot, it's, this is my, actually my first raw deer with the 6.5 Creedmoor. And uh, I shot behind the shoulders. And we have the, the the hole here for where the bullet hit. It's maybe a little um, far back than I, where I thought I aimed. Maybe it was a little slightly angled. And a nice, really small, controlled exit wound. And uh, the uh, caliber is a 6.5 Creedmoor, as I said, and I use the Hornady ELDX for this. It feels good. I think that, yeah, it's actually, we haven't gone more than, I should say, 10, 15 meters from the place where he stood. So it went out fairly quick. So now we will drag him out to the car, get him and go to the cooler room. I have also mounted a 3D con RMR as a secondary sight here 
And uh, this uh, I actually doesn't use that often, but when I need to use it, I really uh, like to have it there. Because many times I can have adjusted the scope up to 8 or 10 times. And when I get close up to uh, some target or something happens very nearby, I can just turn and aim through that sight instead. It's very fast to make that movement and I have a secondary sight to uh, shoot with. Everything uh, for the uh, rifle scope and the secondary sight is held together with a spool mount. And uh, this is actually a quick release version. And uh, this is mounted on the Picatinny rail that's uh, on the rifle. And it's easy to adjust the distance to the, with eye relief and so on. And it's easy to take it off if I want to put another, another scope or a night vision device uh, or so on. Uh, I really like that. And uh, some other, other small details I use when I stalk. Some years ago I get contacted by a guy who makes this uh, accessory for the gunsling. It's Harps of Sweden. And this uh, accessory you fasten on the stock and on the gunsling and you can click this to wear the rifle tighter on your back and I really like it when I'm stalking and we are climbing up hills and down and uh, over some rocks and so on because the rifle is laying very steady on the back of your uh, on your back and when it comes to shooting rests I normally use two kinds of shooting rests when I'm stalking my uh, standard and absolutely most popular rest for me is the Primus trigger sticks with three legs. And normally when I stalk I have it like this uh, together and I use it for resting my uh, binoculars to it. I use it uh, to uh, when I'm going over uh, things and so on to keep my balance. And uh, when it comes to shooting if you get a little longer distance I fold them out so I have the uh, the three legs and if it's short distance and so on I can use it as a one legger and I also can sit down and spread them out and find all different kind of angles. So this is my main go-to uh, gun rest for all kinds of stalk. And also in my pocket I also have always with me my Spartan bipod that I can easily click on to the mounting point here. It's a magnetic uh, lock and so it's easy to uh, detach and uh, this version is the new version that is spring-loaded uh, legs so it's easy to adjust the height and so on. And this I normally use when uh, I get the possibility to lay down and take a shot or as in this area we have lots of big rocks and so on so I can take a rest on top of a rock standing up and, and so on. And uh, they are so small and so late, late weighted so it's easy to carry them in any pocket when I'm out. And uh, of course I have binoculars. I always have them when I'm stalking. Uh, I think it's uh, very good to spot animals. And I also have a wind indicator uh, this version I have I bought in Scotland for many years ago and I have never found one is better. I don't know the brand. If any one of you guys know the brand please make a little comment here. I uh, bought one 15 years ago on a game show and I, when I went back a couple of years later I bought 10 of them. And so I have maybe for the rest of my life but uh, the, it's a version that is really really good because you can get a very fine what can call it mist uh, to indicate uh, the wind because I always want to use the wind and the sun and the shadows when I'm stalking so uh, I make it as hard as possible for the deer to see me. This is a little about the equipment I use when I'm stalk and uh, please make a comment here below if there is something you think I should add to equipment or if there are some questions you want to ask, I shall be happy to try to answer them for you.
We will now follow Oliver on a hunt for Roebuck, just to show little of the normal use and handling of the rifle and other equipment. Now we have reached the end of this video and we hope that you have enjoyed it and if you did so please click the thumbs up and if you dislike the video do not hesitate to click the thumbs down twice. <laughs>